Hello boys and girls, welcome to Summer Reading. Today we're gonna start out our wonderful summer reading theme, which is Imagine Your Story. I'm wearing my summer reading t-shirt and we've got lots of information about it online at hcplc.org. If you're interested in doing reading with the Rays this summer, there's something right there on the front page. When you go to the website, you'll click on Summer Reading and you'll see the raise icon. You can click on that, download your game card, and start earning prizes and tickets to the game. Also, you're going to be able to do Beanstack this summer. That's going to be the same thing as last summer, except all the prizes are going to be online. So you can do Beanstack too. The information is there under that summer reading icon. And I've also got a little special thing going on at the library at Temple Terrace. You can draw a picture of whatever it is you're reading this summer, or if somebody's reading to you, you can draw a picture to illustrate that story. You can paint it or color it, however you want to decorate your picture. Bring it into the library and we'll hang it up on a big banner near the circulation desk. And that'll be there all summer to decorate our library and make it beautiful. And that way you're sharing with everybody what you're reading. There's a blue box near the circulation desk and you can just put it in there. Let me get started with what we're going to make today for our craft. I've got lots of different shells, and I'll tell you just about a few of them. Uh, this one, let me show you a bigger one. This is a cockle shell, and it comes in different sizes. You can see that one's kind of a medium size. Here's a little tiny one. Those are cockle shells. There's even a nursery rhyme about that. Here's one that's similar. This one is a scallop. And sometimes they come in different colors too. This one's a little bit pinker. And here's one that's got some stripes. And this one is similar, but it's a clam. And you can see both pieces are still there together. You know, it would open and close like this. Now these washed up on the shore and they had just been there a long time. And so they were no longer living. The creature inside was no longer living. And so I was able to keep it. If I think something's alive, I try to throw it back into the water. Here is a conch shell. Here's another one that's a little bit darker color. It's got a little shell caught inside. So that's the conch. And this is a horn shell. It's very tiny. Here's a white one. And there are different varieties in that same family. This is called the jingle shell. And that's kind of a thin, thin, almost see-through kind of shell. Here's a gray one. This one's kind of white, pearly color. The jingle shells are pretty and very fragile. Uh, here's another one. That's one. That one's very dark orange. This one's called the olive shell. And maybe you've seen these. These are all over the beaches here in Florida. Here's a very shiny one. So that's the olive shell. Here is a little boat. Well, let me get a bigger one. This one, you can almost see the little ledge where somebody could sit. They call that a boat shell. I think I might have another one down here. I don't know. Uh, yeah, here it is. I don't know if you can see the little ledge for the canoer. Here is a cat's paw. They can be brownish orange, they can be white. There's the cat's paw, I don't know if you can see from there. Here's one of my favorites, the turkey wing. And I've got a littler one, they come in different sizes as well. That's the turkey wing. Here's a piece of coral that just washed up on shore. And a sponge. If you ever go to Tarpon Springs, you can see the sponge docks and the sponge divers there. Maybe go out on the boat with the sponge diver. But those, all these things grow underwater and sometimes wash up on shore. And of course, a lot of shells come in different colors. Here's just a little piece of one. It's got polka dots. Here's a pretty good cat paw. Anyway, if you want to learn some of the names of some of the other shells, Come to the library and get a book about seashells and you can learn the different names of them. And there was one other one I was gonna show you. Let's see. Um, oh, the barnacle.
tentacles. This one has something growing inside it. It's, it's the regular uh, cockle shell, but inside are a bunch of little barnacles. Those grow on docks and boats, and those little sea creatures just attach themselves to shells sometimes. Here's something my grandmother made out of seashells. Looks like a little pelican. It's just two of the turkey wings glued together, and then it's got another little shell for the beak, and she used a pom-pom with eyes and put two little coquina shells down at the bottom for his feet and stuck it on some driftwood. And another one is on a piece of driftwood here. I think this one looks more like a little duck or maybe a, um, I don't know, maybe that one's supposed to be a seagull. And she used a shell that has that uh, circular uh, design and it looks like the little eye right there in the center. All right. Let's get started with the craft. We're going to make a mermaid necklace or a Poseidon necklace. You know, Poseidon was the Greek god of the ocean, the god of the sea. And the mermaid lives in the sea as well. So let's see how to make that. Now, sometimes a seashell will have a hole naturally in it just because it's been worn down with the waves and the sand. So these shells already have a hole in them, and if you can find a shell like that, you're in business. If not, you can put a hole in it yourself. Here's a little scallop shell. The scallop is thin and probably the easiest to put the hole in. All you need is a little tiny pointy edged screwdriver. The little Phillips screwdriver works well since it's pointy. And find your little thin shell, and you're just going to start twisting, twisting, twisting right where you want the hole to be, and putting pressure, and you need to get, uh oh, there went my magic, there went my box of markers. Uh, anyway, you're just going to keep pushing like this, but you're going to want mom or dad to do this, I think, with you, because I don't want you to end up pushing through and having that screwdriver hurt you. I'm going to go ahead and move on to this one. I did twist and twist and twist until finally the screwdriver worked its way through, and made a little hole, and that way I can string it on a piece of string to make a necklace. I've got blue, I've got a sandy color, here's a little piece of white string. This one might be easiest to use with the beads I'm going to show you, so I'm going to go ahead and string it through. And I've got some different beads here, I've got a little sparkly blue star, I'm going to thread that on. And I might put, oh, I've got some pink beads. I'll string one or two of those on. Here's orange and maybe yellow. And I'm going to put a few on each side of the shell. So let me see. I've got oh, another pink one here and maybe a green one. Whatever colors you have that you can fit on your string. And I've got it on either side. And now I'm going to go ahead and tie my string so that I don't lose anything. Because I don't think I'll put any more beads on. I'm just going to tie the string up like that. And then I'm going to show you how to get that special little like pearl in the middle. That's my mermaid Poseidon necklace. So let's make another one. I've got my shell and the one that we were stringing the beads on and I'm going to take some glitter glue. You could use silver or aqua or blue. And then I've got I've got some of these glass kind of marble beads. You could use a bead or one of those flat kind of marbles that people use in flower arrangements. You can buy these at the craft stores. Um, different colors. There's a lighter green. You could use clear or blue, really any color. Something shiny. If you have a shiny button, it would work. So I'm going to put a good amount of glitter glue just right there in the middle and kind of uh, move it around so that it decorates 
the inside of the shell. And then I'm going to put my flattened marble glass decoration right there in the middle. Sometimes you can use little gem, those little glass gem beads to gemstones. Uh oh! It's best to keep it flat until it dries. Here we go. I'm just going to hold it at an angle so you can see it. But there's my necklace. And I'll put the other one on so you can see. But when this dries, then I'll be able to wear it. Let me put the other one on so you can see. There we go. It's a little bit long, so I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I let it dangle down. But that's my mermaid necklace or my Poseidon necklace. Either one. You can call it either one. I've got some great books that you may want to come get at the library. At Temple Terrace, we'll have Heroes in Training, Poseidon and the Sea of Fury by Joan Holub and Suzanne Williams. That looks like fun. And here's the Pirates of the Caribbean Jack Sparrow, Poseidon's Peak by Rob Kidd. You might like to read The Unseen World of Poppy Malone, A Mischief of Mermaids by Suzanne Harper. Here is a nonfiction book, Poseidon's God of the Sea and Earthquakes. So you find this in the 398 section. That's really where our um, folklore and mythology books are. It's written, this one's written by Terry Temple. So she's kind of giving you a little information and history about Poseidon. Some great pictures in this one. Here's the part-time mermaid, Girl by Day and Mermaid by Night by Deborah Underwood. That looks like fun. The Mermaid's Gift is written by Claudia McAdams. And the Book of Mermaids by Patricia Saxton. Lots of great books this summer to read at Temple Terrace Library. I hope I see you there. Thank you so much for joining me today for summer reading. It's going to be a great summer. Bye-bye.